There's no place in this world where I'll belong when I'm gone. And I won't know the right from the wrong when I'm gone. And you won't find me singing on the song when I'm gone. So I Hello, I am here with Vittoria, our mysterious typer. <laughs> Who is she? You'll never know. What does she look like? One can only dream. <laughs> <laughs> um, Vict Victoria is a six wing five social self prez uh, with nine and three fixes, although she seems kind of four fix sometimes. Um, and today we are typing Phil Oaks, who I think might be a six wing five with nine and four fixes and social self press. So this hopefully will work out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you, you don't know anything about him, right? Or uh, very limited info, but maybe, maybe that will give me some um, advantage. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Free, probably. Maybe for bias. So I also am um, going to show a clip just to give us kind of context a little bit on his life for you and who okay, he's kind mm -hmm. of like, not widely known I don't think I think he had like a sort of like this short period where people knew him but he's like a a protest folk singer it was like he was sort of around the same time as Bob Dylan I think they were even friends and were maybe even supposed to do some kind of festival together or or maybe they did I don't know uh but he never like got like it was just you know not at all the same level so um but yeah I discovered him in the last few years when I got super into protest songs <laughs> and I fell in love so um I mean he kind of looks social self perhaps in these photos he looks plain we can uh he looks plain enough I think we can uh average he, he looks like the whatever the average uh what do you call it average citizen so I would say sexual line probably yeah yeah, he does look 60 and 690, kind of, or 960 even. He's kind of got six eyes, though. Like, he kind of got the, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the, he does. Um, a little bit of sparkle, like. It looks like a nice, friendly guy. You would uh, walk up to, to whatever, start a conversation. Oh, so maybe he's six wing seven and not six wing five. <laughs> <laughs> um, he does seem um really like he does seem withdrawn to me and kind of like sad and I don't know, but I think his heart fix might be four wing five. So, um, anyway, I guess we can just watch like a little context on Phil Oaks, or actually, let's start with a Phil Oaks song. Um, oh, okay. These are very social self prezzy. Uh, this is my favorite one, but it's not on a video. Um, okay, wait. <laughs> the name. <laughs> so this, this, like, here he also does like a lot of like social framing, contexting, um, which is kind of an interesting thing to observe before his, a lot of his songs. It's almost like a comedian set in some ways. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. This prefacing stuff feels uh social slash six. Yeah. The almost calls for the violent overthrow of the government. I'm only kidding. Get that. <laughs> You're all around just trying to prove a point here. Millionaires and paupers walk the hungry streets. Rich and poor companions of the restless me yeah, like so right out the gate he's shitting on the government and singing about millionaires and paupers that's like <laughs> some social self present six influence like <laughs> something no i lost it <laughs> <laughs> oh and that comment he made was kind of weird i think he he was actually on the cia's 
was like they were following him like the same they did to uh, John Lennon and a bunch of other uh, famous singers like and he was John Lennon was murdered uh phil oaks died of suicide i don't know i mean he could have died of suicide because he was very depressive but he was on the cia's um watch list for his like anti-government sentiment and which is basically just uh criticizing uh calling out the truth like saying truth and facts (laughs) yeah being anti-american you were saying he was anti-vietnam war too right He's yeah. anti-war, anti. Um. Oh yeah. Here, well, here's this the song "I Ain't Marching Anymore" was I think a pretty big anthem mm-hmm. for people who didn't want to be in the war. Um. I heard Johnny Madeline, I saw many more dying, but I ain't marching anymore. It's always the old to lead us to the war. Always the young to fall. Look at all we've won with the saber and the gun. Tell me, is it worth it all? Like a lot of songs criticize, like a lot of social criticism songs. Like, <laughs> seems to be the bread and butter of social self prez. Um. Political song. Goes into some aspects of the surreal and hopefully inevitable. The war is over. There is no more war. It's all a figment of some maniac imagination. Silent soldiers on a silver screen, framed in fantasies and Drugged in dreams Unpaid actors of mystery The mad director knows that freedom will not make you free And what's this got to do with me? I'm so I keep listening. This one's more emotional. Um, it's not all political, but... I'd like to do a song called When I'm Gone, which is about the philosophy of all the songs I write. There's no place in this world where I'll belong when I'm gone. And I won't know the right from the wrong when I'm gone. And you won't find me singing on this song when I'm gone. So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here. Won't see the golden of the sun when I'm gone And the evenings and the mornings will be warm when I'm gone Can't be singing louder than the guns while I'm gone So I guess I'll have to do it while I'm here Every pair I, like, I, I kind of think when there's four and six influence, it's more like edgy sad. Do you know what I mean? Edgy sad? Um... I can see it. Yeah. Cause so you don't like... think he has a four? Oh no, I do. Yeah. He was he was provocative, like for his day. Like he was pretty. Uh, like like the fact that he was even on a CIA watch list. You know what I mean? Like this one. <laughs> I was listening to this a lot uh, in 2020, 2021. I don't know. Yeah, that's the one that made me laugh. The title. <laughs> political opinion one of the shadiest of these is the liberals kind <laughs> <laughs> the reason this channel loses followers <laughs> an outspoken group on many subjects <clears throat> 10 degrees to the left of center in good times 10 degrees to the right of center if it affects them personally so here then is a lesson in safe logic I cried when they shot Medgar ever Tears ran down my spine And 
And I cried when they shot Mr. Kennedy As though I'd lost a father of mine But Malcolm X got what was coming He got what he asked for this time So love me, love me, love me I'm a liberal Get it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, so for the people who might be watching this and be triggered, that's calling a liberal hypocrisy. He's not actually saying that for the people who can't understand any level of nuance, of which there are many. Anyway, that's my little social six context. Uh, <laughs> I think I think it's interesting because sixes are often like big hypocrites, but they're also often the ones calling out the hypocrites. So Yeah, and the thing is like, yeah, I feel like with with sex hypocrisy, it's almost like they they don't even see it. Mm. It's like they have to they have to really stand out, like they have to really pause and think to to see themselves doing it. <laughs> yeah, I think with the four fix, probably maybe social self pres too. It probably it probably becomes like almost some kind of self loathing focus to like um, the awareness of like. What a piece of shit you are. <laughs> I feel like for so far, I feel like he might be wing seven. Okay. He he just has this like I don't know again to use like very impressionistic uh, adjectives. He has this like playfulness, brightness, bright eyes, even his move like the way he moves his body. Uh, it might give him like a more assertive, whatever to like uh kind of like. Haha, ha, look, look what I'm singing. Look what I'm singing, guys. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, compared to like a I'm trying to think of a, like a, I feel like six swing five activism might be more, I don't know, uh, covert. <laughs> okay. Although it was like Carlin, George Carlin, six swing five, right? And he's, I think we've, I've heard both for him. Um, but I, I think that he might be wing seven, to be honest, because he, he's, like, pretty erratic. <laughs> but I can also see wing five. I feel like... Because of the cynicism. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point, cynicism. Because if he has... Like, to me, it seems like he has five, but it might just be four wing five, potentially, heart. Um, because, like, he does have this whole anti-government, anti-state, like um anti fucking everything sort of thing a legendary american folk singer phil oaks is widely regarded as one of the world's most influential political musicians rising to fame in the 1960s oaks used his music to both chronicle and help mobilize the labor rights civil rights and anti-war movements he recorded hundreds of songs that reached millions of people including i ain't marching anymore draft dodger rag and the war is over in April 1976, less than a year after organizing a massive concert in New York Central Park to mark the end of the Vietnam War, Oakes took his own life. He had struggled with alcoholism and bipolar disorder that consumed his final years. He was 35 years old. Well, a new documentary has just been released chronicling Phil Oakes' life. It's called Phil Oakes There But For Fortune, premiered at New York's IFC Center last night. This clip from the film features a number of speakers, including Phil Oakes. It begins with Oakes' producer, the musician, and arranger Van Dyke Parks. Anyway, I have to watch all of that. Hangs out all the time at the club is Phil Oakes, a great folk singer. <laughs> Well, listen. He's jolly. Writing and performing. Huh? Saying he is jolly. <laughs> For several years, and you've been at the club maybe uh, 55 times, but you've never performed there. Why? Well, because you never asked me to perform when I needed the break. You know? When you needed the break. When I needed the break and the, and the exposure, you know. It was a commercial club then, and I was in commercial. <laughs> it's trashing the guy. <laughs> That's seven sass. <laughs> oh, you could be right, actually. That's seven, like, revenge best serve cold kind of, I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> yeah, and he is smiling, too, while he's saying it. So, yeah, maybe. <laughs> you, you, you're now, now commercial by default. By default? Because I'm still alive and performing after all these years. 
How does that make you all of a sudden commercial? Well, because most fink, most folk singers are gone someplace else. You started to say most fink. No, well, that was of course a habit. <laughs> oh, okay, go ahead. And most 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 folk singers have those finks have disappeared. <laughs> all folk singers. Yeah, and they've joined they joined rock and roll groups, you know. And so I'm still here. That's true. And uh, I haven't changed over the years. I'm just 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 as dull as ever. So. Oh. He's like insulting himself, but also like making sure you know that he's like hasn't joined any rock groups. He's authentic, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just as dull as ever. Oh. I know. <laughs> No. Oh, come on listen I, I just recently i was on the coast right phil we were both there together and you were doing a great uh promotion uh it was uh posters all over the place you even enlisted me to to paste them all over malibu what, what right. was that all about why don't you tell everybody because oh well i get involved with the uh, politics of the absurd in california which is a it was a theater demonstration which in which we declared the war okay yeah, maybe it is like <laughs> politics of the absurd what the fuck is that or over in Vietnam and celebrated the end of the war on June 23rd in Los Angeles. We celebrated the end of the war and we're going to probably do that in New York sometime soon also, just as a theater piece. And we have a poster uh, which says that, a picture of the sailor kissing the girl from, from Times Square, VE Day. It's one of, one of your protest ideas. I mean, you're yeah. basically, yeah. are you known as a protest folk singer? Yeah, yeah. That's a good idea, actually. I wonder who did that first, him or John Lennon? Because John and Yoko did The War Is Over. I wonder if they bit Phil Oaks, because he must be earlier than them, right? I like it either way. Yeah. yeah. Man, everybody copied Phil Oaks and he barely got, look at this, 1.83k subs on this channel on Phil Oaks Vivo. Only 29k views on this video. This is a shame. <laughs> this is an outrage. This, this proves is a six. <laughs> oh, None self promoting. <laughs> it's, it's a shallow argument, but it kind of makes sense. Yeah, I like it. And nine fixed, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I know it's great, which is a dirty lie. I've never approached it. <laughs> I, I think it's great. You write always about current things, I noticed. For instance, did anything happen yesterday that you wrote about today? Well, let's see. I wrote about well, my, my, the ballad of. Uh... Of uh, Louise Day Hicks. <laughs> I right. finished late, late last late night. Late last night, right? Huh? And, uh, <laughs> That's great. Listen, what are you going to sing tonight? Because uh, you know, there's so many great songs you have. Well, I've got a couple. Uh, I'll do one oldie but goodie from the old days, which is uh, oh, my dropped flat pick. Your and, dropped uh, flat pick. That's one. <laughs> otherwise right? known as Derbys for Fortune. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. the other one will be uh, the other one will be a song I wrote after I saw you in California. A song. Um, about the a song written after a demonstration, which uh, it's a song which declares the war over. It's a new kind of song. it's a new kind of song. It's not a protest song. It's a di it's a different kind. Last thing about it, it's a before you song. sing the songs, I noticed lately. You it's also very anxious, a eh? very like. Yeah, and then he's he's kind of shy. He's just like slouched over. You know what? He it's funny. Like we we did Dylan Moran, who's six nine four. Uh, and he has this, he kind of smile. it could be just a anatomical thing because they kind of have a similar ish bottom half of their faces, but like he kind of smiles the same way. Oh, you're right. Yeah, and they both sort of, sort of like this innocent sort of like, like you said, like, yeah, like an inward smile, like they smile and like kind of just like uh, collapse into themselves. I don't know. Mm. Could be like a, it could be a four fix. Uh, based on like temperament alone oh that's a good point yeah it was like double withdrawn fixes yeah you've been singing with a lot of uh orchestration you've really got you know no longer is it simple uh folk singers with uh just a guitar are you happy with the way your latest album turned out yeah well for, for the album only not, not for stage but for the album we, we, or we orchestrated Every song, in some sometimes symphony. I'm yeah, fine without it. Why all of a sudden? I wanted to extend my musical boundaries. I and think I th this does it. Yeah, I, th I think the lyrics are are uh, are, are. What about the folk singers who were in rock, like the Mamas and Papas and the Love and Spoon folks? Uh, well, you no, know, you, you can you can turn any way you want. I I I I, th I thought I was much more interested in counterpoint, counter melody, uh, and uh, and you know orchestral textural sounds rather than just uh, putting a rock band in back of me. And you're one of my favorite. Focusing. I gotta tell you, listen, there's no, you know, there's well, no question about it. So let's sing. Thank you. Okay. One of my favorite club owners. Okay, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
you can't get stoned enough. Self numbing. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's like, oh god, that's a proof of nine and four. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of like there's that. Like, I mean, I think four, six, and nine are very self-destructive. I mean, seven is two, but in a different way. Four, six, and nine are all self-destructive uh, type, like, um, especially when in combination with each other. Um, cause it's yeah, like seven, is, uh, seven is a different type. Seven is like um, thinking you're indestructible and so destructing yourself in that process. Mm -hmm. But uh they don't have the, they don't have the self-hating piece. Uh, well, or like uh or like trying to do trying to uh stimulate themselves but because they're they're always stimulating themselves they kind of hit a wall and so they need to go further mm, mm, interesting yeah but then six and nine and i think is a different thing it's more yeah. i think more on like self-hate <laughs> probably <laughs> Yeah, I think, well, sevens, I think, have a different kind of self-hate, but it's a lot of the four, seven, nines that end up ODing, and there's a lot of four, seven, nines in the, in the um, 27 club. <laughs> or seven, seven, four, eights as well. Yeah, four, seven in general, I think, is also self-destructive because, like you said, it's oh, yeah with also, like, <laughs> the abyss, so it's just this, like, pendulum of like the like the mad hatter sort of lunacy <laughs> and self-destruction that comes along with that like yeah a lot of the 20 27 club or four seven stems so it's kind of anyway and lana wished to be in the 27 club but unfortunately she had the six so she probably like more quietly self-destructed and it wasn't as successful <laughs> wait you're talking about who lana who tell her oh okay i i okay that's what i thought i don't she know why i over a lot of weight and dated a police officer or something like that oh I boy <laughs> i don't like her i don't like her music honestly but you know me i have a very particular taste <laughs> anyways <laughs> you like this guy's music at all He's nice enough. He sounds like uh, kind of like Irish folk. Oh, yeah. It does kind of. You can see him sitting around the fire with a potato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, when I, when I went to college, my first two years were, were just drifting. At, at that time, I'd even I'd stop reading and I lost interest in a lot of things and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And um, in the middle, about the middle of it, oh, in college, I just started to write. Uh, just and not music, just writing um, uh, stories and satires, and 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 that and so journalism became the thing that I, I just decided I wanted to become a writer of sorts. And then when I, I learned a guitar, and it all came together, it, the um, I mean, it was like a new freedom. It was a new sphere, a new area to to delve into. A song has an emotional attraction by itself. Uh, if uh, you're a thinking person and if you add on uh, words that say something, words that have meaning and words that pertinence to to your to this time, you get double power. You get an extremely potent uh, communication going. The, the thought of, of a song like I ain't marching anymore. That's kind of speaking to his like trifix stuff. Like that's like it's like authenticity, like speaking the truth and also like speaking from emotion and like. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Being sold on, on a mass level, which is quite possible now. Uh, this, this is the most incredible thing to me, anyway, because um, this, this is not where all the flowers gone. It's not blowing in the wind. It's not if I had a hammer. It's not a song that can be commercially arranged and sold without thinking of the words, which is, which is the whole big difference that, that is often overlooked. Because oftentimes in the past, people argued and said, well, as topical music made it or not, and they argue about all, all these songs that we're selling that, that I just mentioned. But um, in a sense, that the topical music never sold, you know, to the public. And these, these were these were uh, safe topical songs, songs that that could be overlooked and unheard of. Uh, and what's happening now is that songs that cannot be overlooked, that are impossible to be arranged out or to be changed around, 
um, blunt, right to the point songs are now reaching a mass audience. And this is the whole, uh, this is the most exciting thing of everything that for the first time in American history, I think that real, honest, bitter, even controversy can reach a mass audience. Um, <laughs> your thoughts on that? I kind of, uh, I, I don't know, like, um, I'm having a hard time understanding what he's trying to make, but I, I do think, like, I think what he's trying to say is he's basically talking about, like, uh, mass production of songs. <laughs> like like trying to make a successful song is that what he's talking about yeah but i think i think he's just saying that the industry is changing because now it's like valuing like real art but he's saying it in a less like pretentious way potentially mm -hmm. so not all poems make good songs. Uh, that's true. Not, most of them don't because the uh, meter isn't, uh, and the rhyme scheme isn't set up that way. The Highwayman is a very narrative ballad. And it was, it always struck me. Uh, first time I heard it, though, uh, it's floated. It's got a certain kind of lyricism that floats. You know, poetry should float. And, and, and uh, songs are, um, are such a direct communication when it's, it, and cer certain types of poems just seem to fit right into it, and others others can be stretched into it if you change the meters around. You said direct communication. What did you mean by that? Something you can understand right away, and and still maintain its beauty. Mm -hmm. You don't need to translate it or think about it or make it a brain thing, but it just hits you and just comes. Yeah, through. and if it's good, you, you it's 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 good enough to that you can think about it, you know. But it's still it's still has got some enough of a communication idea to a work mm -hmm. I guess he's probably nine second eh uh yeah I was thinking that he's not like gripping tightly enough to his image like he's doing four heart stuff in the interviews but it's not it um, doesn't stand out yeah usually like I I take for head types I take that second as usually that's a default mm -hmm. some people are the you can feel like maybe they're hard second, but I mean, for head types. Yeah. When did you first hear the Highland? Oh, when I was a little boy, <laughs> rolling the streets. Do you remember first person? Up, mm, various, oh, up, mm, various, oh, yeah. Do you remember who the first person was who you know, read it either to you or that you read it? Or, no, was uh, it school at all? Do you know? I don't know. Probably. Yeah. It's a lot like softer and quieter with this lady, eh? Like, yeah, I wonder if this is like an earlier interview. Maybe, yeah. He's also, did you? Me. Yeah, he's like wispy. Nine wing one, I think. Eh? Nine wing one got. Yeah, I was. Uh, I was gonna ask you about heart too, because I think heart is gonna be harder. Well, I think to me, if he's six wing seven, then he's probably four wing five heart. Um, I don't see four. I don't really see four wing three, but I mean, if he's already got double attachment, like I think his heart space is more. Whoa, like it's more the world is ending and, um, depressive and, this is awful. <laughs> I think is more four wing. Yeah, three. it's hard to see. I was gonna like one argument you can make for wing three is that he, he he's try he has this like, um. Uh, trying to like produce something good sick. i don't know is but that's also six yeah like kind of pride in the craft kind of uh although like he yeah it's, it's hard to as well like that's like i like yeah also like hard worker like wanting to like you know like they they like i think sixes often feel like they have to prove themselves and shit like that like do a good job <laughs> yeah that, that do the good job like whereas whereas when you think about like something like three is like they want to be the best at the the thing um mm -hmm. you can say one argument for wing five is that he again but that's like i i don't think a wing five at the very last fix is gonna explain this but he kind of goes into like like the tech part is like oh i do this uh yeah. i i do i do counter whatever 
the this and that and the the person interviewing him is probably like bro i don't care <laughs> no i know that's why i was like is he image last like the... <laughs> mm-hmm. also just like explain i mean i don't know maybe it was just some weird but there's not a lot to go on with him but yeah it's funny this looks like a six face to me. <laughs> like a six face Man- I do not know why sixes, six men love to do that. I swear to God, you look at any six men and they have like 153 lines on their forehead. <laughs> like, you don't need to do that, bro. I've seen I've seen like a sev- sevens do it sometimes. It's, oh, it's but like this kind of, yeah, this basically like sun in your eyes, raised eyebrows. Like, it's so unflattering. He he's doing it here as well. Yeah, it almost seems like yeah, it's like who me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? Actually, this is a good thing to do. Uh, get his quotes. Yeah. Oh, is that what you were doing? Okay. Yeah, I was just about to, but I, yeah, I saw this and I was like, oh yeah, this is kind of like a four fixed quote. Like in such ugly times, the only true protest is beauty. It does seem like a four fixed quote. You can do right or you can be oh God, I can't read that. Who's this? <laughs> you can do right or you can do what you are told, and the prize of the victory will belong to the bold. That's six. <laughs> That's kind of like a counter like a counterphobic six thing. Step out the guidelines of the official empires and make your own rules and your own reality. Yeah, that's like six, seven, seven, six kind of I mean, the framing of it is six, but make your own reality yeah like that's seven ish that's seven ish seven nine four jason makes sense actually and some of the things that he said that i didn't really pick up on before like t- talking about absurdism and like i don't know just thinking like he's creating some like the like unless john lennon did it first i don't i'm too lazy to look it up but like he like thought he could like kind of like almost hypnotize people into like the war being over like by singing mm. some song the war is over like the people would just be like yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. That's magical thinking i like yeah four seven though so <laughs> In the courtroom, watch the balance of the scales. If the price is right, there is time for more appeals. The strings are pulled, the switches stayed, the finest lawyer's fees are paid, and a rich man never died upon the chair. Social self prez, sex influence. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, no, these are quotes. So I guess that was from a song. And then this is like, it's always the old to lead us to the war, it's always the young to fall. And he's spitting truth, motherfucker. Um, oh so this is so basically near the end before he committed suicide or was suicided he i think he like created this like persona this other alternate um singer. oh god but then and then he like talked and then he made this weird recording about i don't know if it was for it was for a radio or something i didn't really listen to much of it um where he's like basically telling the audience how he killed how he killed phil oaks but it like as this persona so it's more about the death i think of him as like an artist and he's created this other persona but um i don't know if that speaks to like a certain type or not that's scary i think that speaks more to the to the bipolar disorder than <laughs> <laughs> Although I do feel like a lot of like famous people do have this like per- performance persona that they the ego stuff like alters yeah that's true. Uh, there's a the rolling. All right, br- br- brief recap. Um, okay, here here. We, we begin with a sad tale of the death of Phil Oaks in the Chelsea Hotel, room 714, approximately four nights ago. And what's, what's today's date about? I don't know, June 27th. So, so June 20, on the first day of summer, on the first day of summer, 1975, Phil Oaks was murdered in the Chelsea Hotel, room 714, by Luke Train. 
um, who is now speaking. I killed Philip. Um, uh, the reason I killed him was because he was a, a sometimes genius, but he drank too much and was, was a boring old fart. And, he, and for the good of uh, society's public and secret, he needed to be gotten rid of. Because although he had brilliant ideas, i.e. the meeting with Salvador Allende and a couple of good songs like Crucifixion and Changes, he, uh, he was no longer needed or useful because he was too embarrassing at parties. And, and the, the, the Rothschilds wouldn't want to know him. But how brilliant he was, he, he couldn't hold a conversation, nor hold himself up. But but he was very valuable to the to, to various causes, both political, uh, religious, and artistic. For his the name died. Like, every, everybody respects Phillips no matter what he does, because, because he was always honest. Uh, uh, I should have probably listened to that first. That was upsetting. That's himself talking about himself. Yeah. And you can oh, well. tell he's drunk or he's probably like unwell. Oh, that sucks. But at least he was honest. That's such a six. <laughs> at least he went out honest. Um he frightened his friends with both his drunken rants about the FBI and CIA and about his claiming to want to have Elvis's manager manage his career. Colonel Sanders. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> I think like, <laughs> <laughs> he took the identity of John Butler Train and the train had murdered him and the train had replaced him. He was convinced someone was trying to kill him, so he carried a weapon at all times, a hammer, a knife, and a lead pipe. His brother attempted to have him committed to a psych hospital? Fuck his brother. They pleaded with him to get help. They feared for his safety. Unable to pay his rent, he began living on the streets. Oh. Oh. I shouldn't laugh. <laughs> this sucks. Like, sorry. I like, yeah, I didn't. I mean, I knew he, I knew little pieces of this. Um, oh God. Um, no, but the CIA I mean, um... did have him on a watch list. And the thing is, like, uh like i like i actually ended up googling this because i was curious and he was on their watch list and they did have files on him so the thing is and that's what they've done to like other famous people where they have them followed around and they start like like it starts to fuck with them and then people think they're crazy so i mean it's possible that he wasn't even um actually mentally ill but he was driven to mental illness by the government which does not surprise me given the state of the world in 2023 but Poor, poor, poor Phil Oaks. He saw the truth and he paid the price for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's funny. You, you always have like the joke of like schizophrenics thinking the government is watching them. But then in his case, it was, it was actually real. <laughs> it was actually what was happening. 500 pages on him. Well, I mean, if you look into like uh, experiments and stuff they've done, I actually think a lot of <laughs> probably they've created a lot of schizophrenics because of the shit they've done to people like Charles. Charles Manson was um, a, an MK Ultra subject. Um, Ted Kaczynski was also in those experiments like they've they created like a lot of people that were that went crazy. So like by doing. Um, like there's like tons of files and all this stuff. I haven't gone too far down the rabbit hole with it, but um, it's it's dark. I don't think people realize actually what goes on in this planet. So they think, oh, well, they must be crazy. Um, <laughs> no, I probably sound crazy, but that's okay. <laughs> <'cause I like> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> also, they like people also don't think this is true, but they have um like frequency weapons like there's they, like there's patents for for weapons that actually it's called voice of god so they have voice of god weapons where they uh can actually like kind of signal things into people's heads so and then there's like what is it like havana havana syndrome like that's a free that's from frequency weapons people think that's made up too it's not um but you know people phil oaks would know phil if phil oaks was still here today he would be able to tell you <laughs> would tell us yeah this is when i get sexy <laughs> it's like sevens beating sixes when they when they move on to six basically yeah because there's more looseness with it you know 
Yeah, I'm reading I'm reading up on Havana syndrome. Right now. <laughs> okay, so so far we have him as six wing seven, nine wing one, four wing five. I mean we watched his videos before he started losing his mind, so it's fair. Yeah. I think so. Oh, it was reviewed. Okay, so it's on his Wikipedia. Years after Yeah, his- five page hundred pages. Five hundred pages. Those motherfuckers. Like you know what? There's also <laughs> theories that they influenced uh the countercultural movement to to push things in the direction they wanted, which does not fucking surprise me after all I've learned about social engineering over the last three years. But anyway, it's turning unsurprisingly a little <laughs> political but <laughs> they continue to consider him potentially dangerous after his death that's hot i hope to leave behind a legacy as such too dangerous even after death i hope our names are next to each other on the watch list <laughs> yours will be like your picture will just be this like blurry like hidden like <laughs> oh my god yeah, they they hate they hate great art, and you know what? They've done everything to socially engineer it so great art does not get created anymore, and they've done a fantastic job. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. so I listen to songs of yesteryear and uh, prefer older movies and such because and books because God. Anyway, so yeah, I think six wing seven, nine wing one, four wing five, SOSP. I think yeah. when you have like triple head as well in your trifix, it amplifies like a lot of heady concerns and anxieties and like fixations as well. So, mm-hmm. I mean, aside from the fact that they probably were like stalking him into like mental illness, um, the, I think it kind of, because I also, it's funny because I know like six is the truth, the truth seeker and the truth type and the honest type. But I, I actually like, I've I've really noticed like I think four wing five heart is also fixated on truth, but it's got kind of different kind of truth. It's like more a dark existential truth that four wing five is trying to like a primordial, like a verbal yeah. from the womb kind of yeah. Yeah, like and more about like the existence, not like in the 90s truth of existence like we are all collective unconscious it's more like <laughs> hey it's it's real for sure and i hate it um but, <laughs> but i think four and five is more like like the horrors the truth the truthful horrors and um but also i think four and five heart has the capacity for seeing the other side as well so i think um christina said on this call that we just had about uh the love witch and she said something like the lightest or like something like the lightest people cast the darkest shadow like that quote and I think the same could be said about maybe the darkest people can cast the brightest light if that makes sense because they're not Mm -hmm. afraid to look at the darkness and so um there's some there's sort of hope inside of that horror if that makes sense yeah yeah and yeah four is a pretty dark pretty dark and i think nine's pretty dark with six and four like even darker than eight because i feel like eight doesn't really care you know and nine cares that's true eight is um it is the (laughs) it is the darkness of itself (laughs) no no (laughs) no eights that's true eights are more preoccupied with like I don't know. I don't. I feel like I'm not equi- that equipped to talk about AIDS, uh, apparently. But um, I think it's like they're just more sur- more about like their immediate, what's harming them, what's affecting them, rather than like, or like or like who, what's affecting people or things they're aligned with or like the people under their wing. Kind of that's the uh, the most they can reach. But to care about like collective whatever what's happening to the collective you know some do but i don't think that's the norm for sure yeah like alex jones does but he's only eight fixed um martin luther king is an eight was an eight though all right right yeah and he cared he was benevolent uh yeah but he had like a six two 
but yeah, he was like a powerful leader, and that they took him out too. So yeah, yeah. The feds took him out too. They take out everybody. Scary. I think they were worst. I feel like I feel like they were worst in the day back in the day. No, they're not. They're worst. What are you? What are you talking about? <laughs> No, but they but now like they don't do this killing stuff anymore. I think they have like more sophisticated ways. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's okay. Okay, your voice cut off. The FBI, the CIA. No, that's turning into an SMR session now. <laughs> I can't hear you. I'm not talking. I'm trying to listen. Oh. <laughs> I'm saying. Okay, okay, I'll I'll, I'll paraphrase. I, I'll rephrase it because I said it badly. I'm just saying the FBI and the CIA in the 70s and the 60s were just very, they were kind of like dumb. They just killed people. Like they're like, oh, oops, you know, just shoot, just shoot the leaders. But now it's like more, it's more like sophisticated. It's just not like, oh, this person's gone. Well, except maybe Jeffrey Epstein and uh, Bourdain, maybe. I agree it's more tools. sophisticated. I agree it's more sophisticated. But they're, they're it's not just like let's just kill them, you know? It doesn't work like that anymore. Or maybe or like they don't resort to it for some reason. I started wondering like a while ago, because there was a bunch of like kind of outspoken celebrities, like famous people that died leading up to 2020. Um, that I wondered if like the feds took them out because they wanted to make sure there weren't any like kind of countercultural artists that would push back on certain things that were going on because like the feds utilize celebrities like oh yeah celebrities to get people to do shit and normalize shit that should not be goddamn normalized um and so i know they take people out all the time like it's and they do it like holly like they do it tons of celebrities even not even just political people but like celebrities like and i read about this a while ago but they there's also like these things called gang stalking that they do to some people where they literally do terrorize like people are higher it's sort of like what scientology has done to people um i don't know if you hear about any of that stuff where they are always like spying on them and going through their garbage and trying to get dirt on them and shit and then like the feds do that shit too um they really mess with people's minds like i mean if i was to think about if i was really rich and powerful and there was somebody that i fucking hated for like they had done me wrong so so wrong i wouldn't kill them i would fuck with them to the point where they like lost their mind <laughs> that's a way stronger strategy like look at what happened to kanye like i think that's i it's possible that he was mk ultra like um and uh and like he's he has these I don't like I don't think he's actually mentally Wait, MK MK what's what did you say? MK Ultra. So you don't know about MK Ultra? No. Oh, they've been doing that to people since like I don't know what, like the fifties, the sixties. Klaus Schwab is actually part of those some of those um experiments. They were doing them in universities to people too, but they also they employ these techniques. Um it's basically these these celebrities get they get um, a handler appointed to them. Kanye has a handler. He's even like posted about it before um, where they don't, <laughs> the celebrity doesn't know they have a handler. It's somebody close to them. And it's like basically a person who's put there to control them and make sure that they don't get any wild ideas, if you will, uh, about, especially, so it's like the feds, Illuminati. Um, but what they do is MK Ultra is, it's like Zoolander, basically. It's like programming, which you can very easily do. I mean, I got trained in hypnotherapy and NLP. So I have like at least somewhat of an understanding of how the mind works now. And it's, and it's like, they can program in trauma. They can program in beliefs, especially if they're dealing with like attachment types and shit, it's probably harder with um, maybe certain other personality types who might reject certain things. Not that I want to put out any tips for these psychos, but <laughs> Um, yeah, they like, and they, they can employ drugs, like, so psychedelics, or they can employ, uh, employ um, pharmaceutical drugs to, like, kind of get people into a state of where they'll accept messaging. Um, I mean, look at MK Ultra. I love how, like, off the rails this has gone. I like how some of the ones that we do together kind of going off the rails. <laughs> 
like, how much of this are you how much of this are you putting this is like this is uh let the people learn the people need to learn this shit because they're living in a bubble god damn it um yeah it was an illegal human experiment doesn't mean it's not happening all the time uh let's say <laughs> to identify drugs that could be used in interrogations to weaken individuals and force confessions through brainwashing and psychological torture, but they use it to control people. Um, it's like, if you think about, like, did you watch any of that Nixium, the Nixium docs or any of that stuff? No. <laughs> I'm trying to think of who else. Or like Scientology, you know how they like do their like, um, what's it called? I feel like I've actually looked at this Wikipedia page before, but I don't know why I forgot that it's called that. Yeah, they do experiments all the time on people, and people don't even experiments, realize. Experiments on Danes, like Danish people. That's funny. Charles Manson. Yeah, Charles Manson has been tied to MK Ultra. Man, oh. I can't even think of the. Uh, I can't even like imagine what happens to people who are uh like stuck in guantanamo bay and things like that for like 20 years oh yeah they're they're horrendous what they do to them i think that they i think they make them wear masks and stuff too like it's um like they keep them in small cages and shit don't they like there's millions of, there's like there's elab elaborate torture techniques that go on there uh I don't know why people would just kill themselves. I would just be like, you know what? It's time to leave the Matrix. Like, fuck staying there for 20 years. That's the thing, though. You can't even kill yourself. Like, how would you kill yourself there? That's the problem. Like, Well, you could incite maybe a fight. Like, start a fight <laughs> so badly that someone beats you to death, which would be, I guess, the ideal outcome. But... Yeah, or like, I don't know, shave a toothbrush into a shave or what's it called? I think there's ways to kill yourself when you don't have a tool. You could bite your wrist flesh off if you tried really Jesus. hard. <laughs> well, I've thought about these things, though, just in case I get... Because I'm a seven. In case I get trapped in some situation. Oh, my God. Wrap bed sheets around your neck. That's another... Isn't that what Epstein did? Uh, you know he was murdered, right? No, did in between quote between quotation marks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Hillary Clinton and everybody else on his like sex log, his Epstein Island uh, Lolita Express uh, log. Although apparently names are supposed to be coming out, I saw a little while ago, but it's and like they just like yeah. Anyways, I don't. Even, oh God, I can't even get into all this. Have you so I guess I'll have to do it. I guess I'll have to do it. Guess I'll have to do it while I'm here.